بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We begin a new chapter of the book عمدة الأحكام which deals with the prayer in congregation and the rules related to the imamah leading the prayer in congregation and hadith number 57 is our first hadith who will do us the honor of reading it yes brother narrated abdullah ibn umar the messenger of allah said the salat prayer in congregation is 27 times superior in degrees to the salat offered by person alone bukhari okay this hadith is highlighting the difference between praying alone and praying in congregation. And the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that it is more superior 27 times than to pray alone. Your prayer in congregation is more superior. This led a lot of the scholars to differ whether praying in congregation is mandatory or not. Because they said that the Prophet is وسلم, comparing one to the other which means that both are acceptable and if you look in the Quran and in the Sunnah you would find that this is not correct because Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in different locations of the Quran that Allah is better than what they worship so Allah Azza wa Jal is superior to what they worship does this mean that what they worship is also okay Definitely not. When Allah tells us that when you hear the adhan of Jum'ah, then abandon trade. Because attending the prayer is better than this trade. However, is the trade, if someone chooses it over the prayer, permissible? No. Not only that, even the transaction that takes place after the adhan of Jum'ah is void, is not correct. So if the adhan is being called, the actual adhan which follows the imam when he comes and says Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and the adhan is being called. If someone is buying and selling, this transaction is void. It's not correct. And after the prayer, they have to renew it again because they've done something that is haram and something that is not acceptable in Islam. Therefore, what is the ruling on praying in congregation? The most authentic opinion is that it is mandatory. And we will come to get to that inshallah in coming a hadith. However, it is extremely important for us to know that if a person does not pray in jama'ah, he's not a kafir. Although some scholars said that it is a condition for your prayer to be accepted, that it is prayed with the jama'ah. We move on to the following hadith, hadith number 58, and also hadith number 59. We would like to uh, read them all together, though they are quite long. Muhammad Aman. Narrated Abu Huraira radiallahu an, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the reward of the salah offered by a person in congregation is multiplied 25 times as much as that of the salah offered in one's house or in the market. And this is because if he performs ablution and does it perfectly and then proceeds to the masjid with the sole intention of offering salah, then for every step he takes towards the masjid, he is given one degree in reward and one sin is taken off crossed out from his account of deeds. When he offers his salah, the angels keep on asking Allah's blessings and Allah's forgiveness for him as long as he is staying at his musalla, place of the prayer. They say, O oh Allah, bestow your blessings upon him, be merciful and kind to him, and one is regarded as being in salah as long as one is waiting for the salah. We will pause shortly now and look at this hadith this hadith 
differs than the one we've just recited before. Why? This says it is 25 times better. The other one says 27 times better and both are authentic hadiths. So the increase from 25 to 27 does not mean that the 25 is wrong nor the 27 is wrong. Both are correct. Now the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that praying alone or praying as an individual in your souk, in your market, in your place of trading is less than praying in the masjid. And he tells us why, because if you recognize the reward, you would rarely skip a salah. If you perfect your wudu, your ablution, and you walk to the masjid only to pray in the masjid, the Prophet tells us that with every step, Allah will give you a reward and will erase a bad deed. So if I'm living 200 steps away from the masjid, imagine every prayer, this is taking place and happening. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ gave us an example of prayer as if someone has a running river in front of his house cleaning his body five times a day would that leave any dirt on his body they said no so the prophet said likewise your prayer it will erase your bad deeds if you maintain to pray it on time and where the prophet ﷺ tells you to do it and not only that the prophet tells us that if you remain in your musalla in the place of prayer the angels keep on asking Allah to forgive you and to have mercy on you. As long as you are in your place doing that and you do not nullify your wudu. Not only that, Allah Azza wa Jal grants us the reward of prayer while you're not praying. So for example, you pray Maghrib and you sit in the masjid reading the Quran, making dhikr, studying if you have exams you have your books you study and Allah would calculate the time from Maghrib to Isha as being prayer for you as well though you're not praying so it's a great reward that a lot of the Muslims are neglecting are ignorant about or they do not care uh, a lot about it so it's a great favor and a great blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal. The following hadith of Abu Hurairah. Yes, please. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu reported that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, The most burdensome prayers for the hypocrites are the night prayer, the Isha, and the morning prayer, the Fajr. If they were to know the blessings they have in store, they would have come to them even through crawling. And I consider ordering the prayer to be commenced and command someone to lead the people in prayer and then I would go along with some men having with them a bundle of firewood to the people who have not attended the prayer in congregation then I would burn their houses with fire Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih al-Muslim this hadith is an authentic hadith by far and not only that it gives us a warning a dire warning to the believers. The Prophet tells us alayhi salatu wasalam, that among the signs of hypocrisy, among the characteristics of hypocrites, is that they find Fajr prayer and Isha prayer burdensome. What is the meaning of burdensome? They find it heavy upon themselves. Do they pray or don't they pray? They pray. They go to the masjid, but they go, as mentioned in the Quran, وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا kusala. Allah is describing the hypocrites. And if they go to pray, they go, but in the state of laziness. They're not up to it, but they go and pray. They attend the prayer with the Prophet ﷺ. And if you compare them and their actions to us, you will be shocked. Because they pray in the masjid. We don't. They pray with laziness. We don't pray at all. We may skip a salah or two every week. Some would say, Sheikh, every week. 
we escape a salah or two every day. We don't pray in the congregation except once or twice. Why? Oh, Shaykh, the masjid is far. This, I have that. I have work. I have, subhanAllah. All these excuses would not help you on the day of judgment. Prayer is a must. And the Prophet is indicating this to us in this hadith. The characteristic of the hypocrites that they find it burdensome to pray Fajr and Isha prayer. Had they known that there is some reward for them, materialistic reward, if there is a bonus, if there is an increase in salary, if there is a free gift, they would have come crawling on their hands and knees. This is what the hypocrites are like. And then the Prophet tells us alayhi salatu salam about something that crossed his mind. He tells us that I was about to instruct someone to give the iqama and call for prayer. And then appoint someone to lead the prayer. And then go with a group of men who have wood fire with them to the houses of people who did not attend jama'ah, who did not attend the congregation. To do what? The Prophet says, alayhi salatu salam, to burn their houses to the ground with them inside it. Why didn't he do so? The Prophet said in an authentic hadith, and had it not been for the children and the women, I would have done so. If I knew that it was only men, I would have burned their houses on, the, on their heads. But because the houses have women, because the houses have children, and this is the reason I did not do so. We have a short break, stay tuned, and inshallah, we'll be right back. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. What was the reason that the Prophet ﷺ did not burn the houses for? Because he feared that there might be women and children in their houses. And from this hadith and other evidences, scholars concluded that praying in congregation is a must. Because the Prophet ﷺ never threatened to burn the houses of people who did not pray duha prayer, or who did not offer voluntary prayer, or who did not offer night prayer and witr. Why? Because these are all voluntary. Yet this thing, burning their houses, indicates that it is mandatory for men to attend the prayer in or with the congregation. Are there any more evidences? A lot. Among them, the hadith where a blind man comes to the Prophet والسلام, and it's in the Sahih. And he says, O oh, Prophet of Allah, my house is distant. It's far away from the masjid. And I'm blind. And I don't have a leader or a guide man suitable for me to take me to the masjid. And in some narrations, the Medina is a place where there are lots of insects and animals and snakes, etc. So is there any excuse for me not to attend the jama'ah, not to attend the congregation? The Prophet said, yes, alayhi salatu wasalam. And as the man was leaving, he said, come back, come back, come back. What did you say? So the man repeated his inquiry, his request not to attend the salah. Then the Prophet ﷺ asked him one question. Do you hear the adhan? And the man said, yes. So the Prophet said, answer it. You have no excuse. So if this is for a man who is what? who's blind and the Prophet gave him no excuse then what excuse do we have on the day of judgment one might say I don't hear the Adhan why don't you hear the Adhan says because I live in a concrete house with double glazed uh, windows and air conditioning on and the TV is on so even if my father is shouting outside of the house I would not hear him is this a legitimate excuse? The answer is no. Callers say, the determining factor in answering the call of the adhan, in answering the mu'adhin is 
that the distance is approximately between three to five kilometers. What do you mean? They say, what is the distance that the voice of a strong man on top of a building in an open area, at least not with concrete structures, in an open area without any exterior noise, such as cars and, and factories and planes, etc. How much is the distance? How long? How far is it for his voice to reach? So they said that it's approximately the diameter of three to five kilometers, maybe less, maybe more. So the scholars say, if you live in an area where the masjid is this far from you, it is mandatory for you to go and answer the call of Salat. I give you an example. In some countries, for European countries, well, not some, most, well, this is an understatement, all European countries, you cannot call the Adhan using loudspeakers. So you might have the masjid next door to you. But because the muaddin is inside, and because it's a concrete building, and you live in a concrete place with all the heating, with all the air conditioning, can you hear him if he calls that? that? So, is it mandatory for me to attend? Yes, it is. Because the distance is less than three to five kilometers. So, the scholars say it depends on the distance, not on the sound reaching you. And by this, we learn that it is mandatory for you to attend the prayer wherever you are in the vicinity of a masjid. And if you do not, then this is one of the characteristics of hypocrites that you should fear not to be with. Also in this hadith, we learn that Salatul Fajri and Salatul Isha are one of the most important prayers in our day and night. The Prophet said والسلام, that whoever prays Isha in congregation, Allah would reward him as if he prayed half of the night. Imagine praying in Isha, 10 minutes, Allah would give you half of the night, which is about four and a half hours, as if you prayed voluntary prayers. And if you pray Fajr, Allah would reward you as if you had prayed the full night. And this is every night. And with the grace of Allah, I know a lot of you, mashallah, pray the five prayers in the masjid, and this is a blessing of Allah. Unfortunately, I know that also there are people who miss prayers. So many times I ask my friends and loved ones and, and those who yani, respect me, and I say, mashallah, how many times did you miss Fajr this month? And he said, I prayed it twice only. In 28 days I slept. Subhanallah, is this a Muslim? And some of them, they would say, MashaAllah, I only missed once or twice, Fajr. And some, MashaAllah, would say, it's been like a year and a half or two years since I last slept. So it's a blessing. Those who do not miss any prayer, definitely they will be among the favored and blessed ones on the Day of Judgment of Allah Azza wa Jal. Before moving on to the following hadith, do we have any questions? MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Arshi. Sheikh, the place where I stay right now, there are two masajid. And in those masajid, they usually invoke Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they say, Ya Rasulullah, and they do a lot of bid'ah. And maybe shirk, and even wear charms, stuff like that. So is it better for me to go to that masjid for the prayers, or should I stay at home and offer salah at home? If the person who's leading the prayer is a kafir then you cannot pray behind him and to label someone as a kafir is not an easy thing but if you know for certain that this man says that Allah is everywhere this is not permissible Allah is on his throne on the seventh heaven no 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 Allah is everywhere even under the table even in here astaghfirullah this is kufr you cannot pray behind this man. If you know someone who says the Prophet ﷺ controls everything and he has the ability to give you goodness and benefit you and he has the ability to protect you from harm. This is kafir. Because this is only something that Allah is able to do. If someone deals in black 
magic in sorcery and he claims that he knows the future this is kufr blasphemy this is major kufr that takes the person out of the fold of islam but if a person has innovations they're wrong their major sins but there are innovations that do not nullify his prayer you may pray with him if there is no other alternative this is better than praying alone without being with the congregation as a muslims we have to stick together as long as he's a muslim pray behind him and also try to advise him every now and then the brother there second row in my vicinity there are two masajids the masjid which is adjacent to my house, they are not following the Quran and the Sunnah c completely. And the other masjid which is a bit farther from my house, they are completely following the Quran and the Hadith. So how do I convince a person who lives in my building? How do I convince a person uh, in the light of the Quran and the Sunnah to attend the second masjid that is a bit farther from the house? Uh, how do I convince him with the proof of the Hadith? As mentioned before, if the first masjid closest to your house they're Muslims, but innovative, meaning they're Ahlul Bid'ah, then their prayer behind them is accepted. Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, used to pray behind who? Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi. What did Al-Hajjaj do? He killed Abdullah ibn Zubair. May Allah be pleased with him and with his father. He killed Sa'id ibn Jubair. He killed hundreds of the Tabi'een. Yet he prayed behind him. So, if he prays in that message, it's permissible as long as the Imam is Muslim. But we always add value to enlarging those who follow the Quran and the Sunnah, those of people who are on the right track. So we would like to enlarge their number by always praying there. And it's better for my heart and it's better for my knowledge as well. Uh, Sheikh, the hadith which you mentioned about Abu Huraira, uh, when said this hadith to many people I mean try to explain that namaz uh, salah is fard in masjid when we try to say that salah is fard in masjid you have to go it is mandatory as you explained so many people they refer that this hadith where the prophet said he liked to burn the house of people who are not coming to the masjid it is referring to Juma. it is not about the five obligatory prayers it is referring to Juma. so I would like you to just clear this uh, this is wrong because there are two separate narrations one that it is in Jum'ah and the other one we just read is Jama'ah the congregation so their allegation is not correct because the Prophet is strictly indicated this and the hadith of the blind man is clear evidence the hadith of the blind man the Prophet told him do you hear the Adhan? He said yes then I have no excuse for you or you have no excuse not to attend the prayer is clear as crystal as they say because it's black and white a blind man you must come so what about those who are not blind i'm afraid that this is all the time we have until we meet next time fi amanillah wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh